today's table for our Chain of Command game. We're going to have another game of uh, hasty defence, but we're going to swip it around, and John's going to be the attackers with the British, and I'm going to be the defenders with the Germans. Uh, it will be based on, I think, the uh, the counter charge of the counter attack of the Third Grenadiers uh, on the Ypres Canal. Uh, so they didn't actually quite push the Germans back over the canal, but they got a good distance in. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing today, and I'm going to be on the defensive. So we're now going to work out what our support units are. Today's chain of command game is uh, a hasty defence, but we're going to do it the other way around. The Germans defending and the British attacking. Uh, so I had a little nose in the history, and I'm, I'm quite fancying doing a little campaign with it. Uh, which is around the Ypres Messine, I think it's Messine, might be wrong, uh, canal, um, where the Grenadiers counter-attack the Germans to try and get back the town and the canal and the crossings over. Uh, they push up pretty far, but don't actually manage to push the Germans back over the canal. So my list is a generic Schutzen platoon. So they're all very basically the same, but uh, the support options tend to change them. So it's a plus one uh, for its platoon force rating, and it gives us a senior leader and a, uh, two senior leaders. It gives us three squads of infantry, uh, and they're one junior leader, an LMG team of three, and six riflemen. So I've got three of those. And you get the 5mm, five 5 centimetre. Cool, 5mm would be a very small mortar, wouldn't it? Uh, a 5mm mortar. Uh, however, it is a Schutzen platoon, so I can either go from the generic Schutzen list or have a mix of Schutzen list and Panzer division support list. So we'll, uh, we'll have a play and see what we get. But I'm going to be the defender, and we'll have to have a look and work out what we've got. Well, it's the uh, British that I'm going to be using. Um, the standard, uh, what I automatically get, is um, a lieutenant with a pistol and a sergeant with a rifle, a two-inch mortar, and an uncrewed anti-tank rifle, which I can decide to crew one of my, make a team out of one of my squads if I want to. I then have a corporal in each unit, and I have three units, not four. There's four there, but I'll tell you that in a second. And that's a Bren with three crew and seven riflemen. I've got 13 points to spend, and that's where the other infantry section comes in, because I've purchased an infantry section at 4 points, a Vickers machine gun with 5 crew at 4 points, and I've had the CS9 with junior leader at 2 points, a pre-game barrage at 2 points, and a drinks cabinet, which enables me to remove shot once per, ter once per game. Um, of a unit, I rolled a dice, the only removed, as I rolled over in a cup of tea, tipping time. Right, with the way the dice ran, uh, we rolled for the scenario, uh, and it was 2d6, so I rolled 5, so I got 5 support choices, John got 13, because that was uh, 5 for the army, 6 for the scenario, and 2 for the difference in the force uh, values. So uh, let's get and see what I get with my five points. So, for my five points in support choices, I've gone for a pack 36 with a junior leader, uh, and that was four points. Yeah, same as my machine gun. And I've gone for a shabby Nazi trick. As normal. As normal, which is the, uh, the fifth columnist. That affects my deployment on one... On one jump off one point. One jump off point, yeah. Yeah, it does. Okay. So it, it works in two ways. It can uh, either stop your senior leader activating if I choose that route, mm. or I can put it down by the jump off point and it stops. It doesn't stop. You need to roll a, a four, five, or six to come on, or a one, two, yeah. three to come on. Same as the barrage. Same think? as the barrage, yeah. So that is my five points of support units. Uh, I, I thought I'd, I needed something to try, and just in case, because you had a lot of points, and I'm sure you was going to take some uh, some armour, so I undenied between taking a Panzer II, which was four points, 
or the uh, Pack 36. Well, I didn't know either, and that's why I thought, what should I go for? But I wanted to use my armoured car. Yeah. It's yeah. got a little anti-tank rifle, so it would have been okay against your vehicle. But, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, so this this has got AP5, the Pack 36, yeah. whereas the other one would have only had AP3. Right. We should be fighting against my tin can. Yeah. Remember, that's also open top. It is also so open I top. You, I think you can drop grenades in the top of it as well. Probably, yeah, you probably can drop grenades in the top. So, yeah, interesting. The uh, the decision-making on your support options, you're looking at what the scenario is, what the terrain setup is, and what your opponent might likely be able to bring with the support unit points <laughs> available. Uh, and that is a fun little part of the game. I've just checked the AP of that. Yeah. It's only two. Two. <laughs> There we go. Uh, so, yeah, interesting. So we're looking at starting the, the patrol phase. So John has got his uh, points over there. His two, uh, he's got two, two lots and two. And I rolled for mine, and I've got all four coming in on this point here. So I could have had some on that side of the uh, road, but I didn't. I rolled two threes, so they are coming on here. So John gets to move his first. Mm -hmm. So remembering they've got to stay within 12 of uh, each other. Yep. Oh. We did have a debate whether it's from the centre uh, to the centre or from the centre to the edge. Uh, but we're thinking 12, oh, actually, just oh, within oh. 12. Oh, yeah, that, that. So that's John's first one up. I'm going to knock that tree down every single time. So for me... Gonna bring the first one over, and we'll uh, we'll jump it over to here at the moment. Is about right. Yep. Yeah, as long as it's wind well. Yeah. yeah, it's fine. Okie dokie. That's what he said. That was the first one up for me. So off on to John. Oh, I can see his plan already. So for me. I think we may hop. That's a tricky one. We might hop one up to here. That's going to be too far. Yeah, there you go. That's just. That's got to actually, yeah, it's got to Yep. Go. Sorry, moving the, uh, the camera about, a bit tricky. It's Stephen here doing the camera while we're doing this. Yeah. <laughs> so John's going to go for his uh, next move. Mm. I'm not quite John's going into his um, little garden. Now, does that cut can that you down? Check, can you check whether you so you, go, so you don't go within twelve? Are well, you able to do that? Are you able to well, I suppose you can, but um, I'm not sure if you can pre-measure. It's like putting it down and then checking to see whether it is. Yes, true. Five hundred and twelve, unfortunately. Okay, so that one's blocked. That one and that let one. Just, let me just remove the building in a second. Yep. I've got to go back to there. Okie dokie, so that one's there. They're locked down. Rightio. So that one's locked it down. Oh, change places. So let's see where we're going to go for mine. Locked. Locked. So I think. This one I'm going to move up to there. Okay. So that's putting that one out up there. In fact, we could probably go across a little bit to there. Yep. So mine's gone to there. 
John's got that one locked down, that one's to move. I've got this one locked down, and I've got these two that's still able to move for the moment. We need a camera on the roof, don't we, really? Yeah. I'm going to have to have, have to speak to my uh, future son-in-law to uh, to sort me out something. All right, so you want to lock those ones down. That locks that. Um, yep. Okay. So, my turn. Your turn. So I think we'll hop this one along to the fountain. So that moves us to there. Uh, and then we've got one down here. So that can go on top of that one that's locked, can't it? If you want you to. Yeah, but it would lock it. Oh yeah, that's a good point. I was hoping you to get that. <laughs> so you're going to move that one up to there. Good point. Yep. That's easy for me. So you're going up to there. Um, we're rearranging the train when you're done. Yep, rearranging the train. Right, where am I going to go with this one? They're going to hop up quite quick, I think, next time. So we're going to move this one can't along. Because oh, he can't stay within 12, is he? So this one will hop up to here. Yep, I see where that one's going. So that one's going in the middle there. So I think we're going to probably move this one up. To lock it. To lock it. Okie dokie. They're locked. And so we're looking at our last two. Last one. Yep. Uh, wow, that is uh, moved up somewhat, isn't it? Is that locked within the other one? Yes. Yes. Right, so that so blue one's locked. All locked. All locked. Oh, that was very sneaky of John. So he's moved that one up there, which locks all of his, and it leaves me with mine like this. Oh, interesting. Right, so we'll move on to the next phase of... Um, Sorting Bird's out. eye view of the jump off points. John's uh, have gone back to the uh, walls on either side of the road there. You can see them. And he's got his third, which is behind the fence there. My three, I didn't get very far across. You can see that little stump of a tree in the wood on that left hand flank. That's one of my jump off points. Another jump off point behind the building here. And the third jump off point behind the fountain. So that's uh, that's where my troops are going to be coming from. So hasty defence. John's got to clear two areas of mine which are two by two. Uh, this one is already looking pretty open. So if he could, if he wanted to, he could throw his troops off to the uh, right. I am going to have to do something on that. He's going to be threatened by... That's a chair I'm standing on creaking. He's going to be threatened by that left-hand jump-off point. I will probably use my shabby Nazi trick to deal with that jump-off point there and hopefully slow him up a bit uh, coming out. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's the theory. So try and... Uh, Slow him getting across to this right hand side and bring on the troops around here. So John gets the first phase, as is the attacker, and he's rolled two sixes, two fours, and a two. Marvellous. Good result. Really pretty, pretty pretty good result for me. John gets to get the next phase as well, but uh, he's only got the two senior leaders uh, and uh, he could bring on a section. So, yeah, not vast amounts John can do with that. So John has uh, gone for bringing on with one of his twos a section. 
So I've gone with my Nazi shabby trick because I can interrupt at any time. And I've placed my fifth columnist onto the jump off point John was going to use. So now John has got the roll of dice in his little pack. And one to three, they won't come on because I've redirected them down the wrong road. And a four, five, or six, they come on. Come on. They come on. They uh, they they didn't fall for my little trick. So my man is still there, and at, uh, on the next turn, John will have to roll a dice to see whether the guy is still directing, or he is um, discovered and dealt with. So John uh, rolled a four, so he could bring them on, and he ignored the uh, fifth columnist officer. So now he's going to roll for his second phase. So that's three fours, which would be senior officers. However, that is a one for a team and also a three for a section that he could move or bring on. So, yeah, not too uh, too bad, but that's a lot of fours, so that does hamper him a bit. So John advanced up his section uh, to cross the hedge. So that was 2d6 and take away the lowest. And then with the one, he's brought on his mortar team. So uh, that's going to go there. Give him a bit of support. And now I'm going to roll the dice to see what uh, I get. There's a lot of threes. And one chain of command dice and a section. Uh, not a section, a team. So uh, let's see what we're going to do. You could shop them as well, did you? No. So, end of the phase. Uh, these, uh, this unit jumped out and took a shot with the LMG at John's uh, deployed section. And with my roll, I managed to get six hits, uh, three hits, needing sixes or fives. So, I got three hits. And John rolled and got one point of shock for the rifle section. And I killed one of the Bren team. So, reasonable for a little uh, snap out and shot with the LMG. John's rolled his uh, dice and he has got two sixes again. So, the uh, another double phase for John coming up. Uh, what else has he got there? A four for a senior leader. Yep. And a one and a three. Oh, could be interesting. Uh, a different viewpoint of my troops deployed over there. Anti-tank gun facing down the road, and the two sections moving along. I'll just remind John that I do have a jump-off point on that side of the uh, board by the oh, wood. I know you have. <laughs> uh, quick face for John. He's just advanced them up. He rolled the two dice and uh, took away the lowest, and he uh, did get a six and a three. So uh, six-inch move for the section. So they've moved up behind the house, and then John's got um, didn't bother. Oh yeah, the uh, mortar mist, uh, and he didn't decided not to use the. Uh, Four. So he's got his next phase roll. So let's see what you get this time around, John. Chain of command dice. Puts you on two. Uh, a three, two ones, and a two. Well, well, that's not bad because you can add those two and ones together, can't you? So that uh, should give you a little option to, to do. John's uh, follow up phase. He has fired the mortar again and missed, which was a bonus. He's moved a unit into the building, and we've looked at the building rules, and you can't actually fire on the turn that you move into the building. So uh, he's moved them into the uh, bottom floor of the building, on the nearest to this corner. And he's brought on Corporal Jones, is it? With his, uh, yeah. with his section, and he's gone into tactical, because he's out in the, the open. Not sure why John's doing that. He has these little thoughts in his head, <laughs> because he knows I've got this little thing here. So he may want me to deploy over there, so it makes it easier for him on the right-hand flank. So he has these thoughts, I know that. So it's going to be my turn to roll the dice. Let's clear the uh, rolling dice. So let's see what I'm going to do. Hmm, a six, so it'll be John's phase. Another one for the chain of command, and two ones and a two. So, interesting. Chain of command dice up to two. So we'll have to think about what we're going to do, because uh, I haven't got very much to move. One section, or a senior leader, or two teams. Or a section of the team. 
Okay, let's think of what we're going to do. So I've used one of the two and the one to put it together to make a three, and I have brought, no, not brought it, I've moved the rifle section up against the hedge, the rifle team, I should say, of the section of the squad up against the hedge, and I've then put the LMG to cover fire against the unit in the building. So I'm uh, hoping that that will do it. That will give a, a minus one to the dice for John shooting out. So that, that could help me. That's more or less moving the cover that I'm in up to hard cover. So uh, that seems a reasonable move. So John's rolled his dice. And what have we got? Two ones, two threes and a four. Oh, that's a good roll. I reckon that's possibly that's a good bad. roll. Yeah, two sections or yeah, two sections of senior leader and teams. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, no, that's not bad at all, is it? My use of covering fire turned out quite good uh, on this one. Put them on cover fire, which meant John had a minus one, so he needed uh, sixes more or less, and sixes and fives because it was Five close range, wasn't it? Close range. Five and six is close range, and he only managed to get one hit which uh, translated into one point of shock for myself. The mortar team, again, firing at the um, anti-tank gun, missed. Uh, what rounds are you using, John? Eighteen. That's your last one, then. Because you only have three. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> three misses with the mortar. Three misses with the mortar. But, uh, but well, yep. So, but now you can you can revert to smoke. Uh, oh, great. <laughs> that's not so bad. And the unit that went tactical only moved two inches across the fields. Uh, so they are hugging the ground. Well, for my roll, I've got two sixes, which will give me a, another phase. And I've got a three... A one and a two, so that's a nice little, um, nice little mixture, I think. So into my first phase, and took a shot with these uh, riflemen, and didn't put any uh, casualties or shock on them at all. Uh, but I've still got the cover fire coming from the LMG team. Uh, I've run this section along behind the wall, and we fired the little mortar at the building and because it's line, direct line of sight it uh, needed a 4, 5 or 6 and I've got one roll of a 4 and that caused one shock on the people inside so I'm now going to roll my dice to see what I get for my second phase so back for my phase and I've got a 6 so it will go to John next I've got one uh, 5 for chain of command a three for a section and two ones. So we'll see what we can do with that. Not a particularly good roll I got there, which was uh, a six, a five, two ones, a three. Is it? Yeah, not much that I could do. So uh, I swapped around at the front so that the rifles now are giving the covering fire and then fire the LMG team. And that put one shock on the brain gun. Yeah, one shock on the brain. One shock on the brain. And I used the two ones to run this unit. So I could only do it as a, a full section. Couldn't use the NCO's initiatives to do anything with those uh, shock. So they're still uh, going along to the uh, towards the church with uh, one shock on each team. Uh, and that was about it, unfortunately. Couldn't fire the mortar. Couldn't bring anything on. Uh, but we've still got our pack 36 on overwatch guarding that road so on to john's phase mm, interesting decision works for john he's obviously going to get another phase uh, but he's got one senior leader one team and a five for his uh, chain of command dice he's up to three yeah so not great for this turn but he will get a second phase having realized somewhat belatedly that John only has three rounds of AP and he's fired three times and missed. Uh, he might have actually hit with one of them, possibly, if we remembered the about direct line of sight and being always in close. However, uh, we've said he's uh, used up his AP and he's now gone for HE and he's fired that and it deviated 
uh, probably the maximum that you could have done, six inches <laughs> to the right. Yeah. So uh, my anti-tank gun is still good for uh, Overwatch down the uh, the road. But John has got another dice roll coming up because he here rolled the two sixes for uh, for a next phase. So let's have a look, see what you're going to bring up, John. Two fours, two, fours. two ones, oh, and a chain of command dice. Oh, I am going to be saved there. Well, no, you could put, you could use two as a section, couldn't you? Well, I could, but you could, or you could just fire another round of HG. Of um, smoke. Yeah, I mean. of smoke. Yeah. yeah. Oh, decisions, decisions. Should give me an upgrade for the years. I've still haven't finished yet. No, well, you've uh, okay. Then you've got uh, you've only got one left. Yeah, but I'm going to bring a senior leader on. Oh, you're going to bring a senior leader on. So John's uh, using his uh, his thought process now on um, free for all for smoke, uh, and he's lobbed a bit over here to cover this uh, my my jump off point for him, and he's going to bring on a senior leader, Wilson, yep. to activate this unit on tactical. And are they going to go runny fast? They are runny fast. Though. They're going to runny fast three d six and get a point of shock. And get a point of shock on each. Okay, dokie. Uh, actually, no, they're not. No. Change of plan. Uh huh. What are they going to do now? I'm thinking move one d6 forward. Yeah. And lay fire down on that mortar team that's sitting behind there. All oh, right, I see. Yeah, yeah. Under cover of smoke. Yeah, you could do that. I'm just thinking if you deploy something over there, there's a good chance you're not going to be able to fire at me. Yeah, that's a good. That is a possibility because of the six-inch deployment. Yes. Yep. So, He's, so basically, this is going to deploy only 1d6. Yep. If you do 1d6 when moving and firing, don't you? You do. Or do you do 2d6 and... Uh, are you standing in tactical? No, I'm just coming out of tactical. You're coming you out of tactical. You can't fire when I'm really Yeah, tactical. so it's 1d6 and fire. Three inches. Yep. And you're going to fire at my mortar team. I'm going to fire at your mortar team. All right, we'll see how that goes. So I brought on my uh, senior, one of the senior leaders, and decided that we would use his initiative. He put covering fire on the uh, for the um, rifle section, and then directed the LMG unit to fire into the building, and that put on. Uh, well, I got two hits, four hits, didn't I? Four hits, but uh, when John rolled the dice, uh, nothing occurred. I needed five and sixes to kill, and fours for shock, but uh, didn't even didn't even get a shock out of those four hits. So on to the next phase, and it was John's. Uh, John did uh, say question what I did, and probably was right in question what I did. Uh, I should have um, just not used the initiative to direct the LMG, and used the initiative to run the other section behind. But uh, hey-ho, we tried to get some shots on that unit in the house, but uh, didn't work. Ooh, so, John has uh, rolled his dice, and he's got two chain of command dice. One six, but more worryingly, two threes. Two threes. But we know at least one mortar isn't firing this turn. <laughs> yeah, I can't name smoke there, can I? Ooh. No, no. Oh, it's a can. I can't. No, you can't. Oh, can't. No, because you've got no four to, to uh, activate the officer. Activate the officer. <laughs> <laughs> so with that phase, John brought on his uh, Vickers machine gun and uh, fired it up the road at my little Pack 36, which has done nobody no harm whatsoever. Uh, but ten shots from the medium machine gun. Uh, but fortunately for me, John only rolled one five out of all the uh, the dice. He needed five or sixes, but just got one five. And I rolled a one, to, um, which meant nothing happened. So, on to my phase. And let's see what I can do with the dice. God, my dice rolling is... Well, no, that is pretty good. That is good. <laughs> that is pretty good. But, to be honest, I haven't rolled much over a two and one for the whole game so far. Uh, so, um, which that, that's... Bad in this which, game. Which is pretty good on this for this as a turn. It is pretty good. I can I can use those, which is quite nice. Well, that was uh, an, an interesting little phase. The uh, the mortar team fired down here using the line of sight from the gun on Overwatch, 
and got one hit on the MMG. Uh, killed one man. John rolled to see whether the junior leader was wounded or killed, and he was wounded. And on the roll on the chart, it took John down one uh, one of the uh, force morale, taking him down to, to eight, and the junior leader lost one initiative, so it takes him down by one. Uh, so that was quite a good move. I then used uh, the three to move the unit double t- double speed up to the uh, the door of the church and then we've used the, the used the junior leader to remove one point of shock and then we've used the senior leader here to put the rifles on cover fire and fired directed the fire of the LMG at the troops in the building killed one on the rifle team but John didn't manage to roll for any wounds on his officers, so that, on his junior leader. So that was okay. So uh, now on to John's phase, and let's see what dice John can get out. He realised that he did do something which he didn't really want to do uh, for some particular reason. Three ones and a three. Well, interesting, they give you a scope, doesn't it? And a five. John also has a chain of command dice as well. Uh, what John had in his head for that MMG team was actually to, to deploy them out of here, up to the fence, up to the hedge, to actually cover the front of the church. And put them on overwatch. And put them on overwatch. Okay, for some unknown reason. And for some unknown reason, <laughs> I didn't. he stuck them there. Possibly, uh, in his head, he was a bit concerned because the fifth columnist is still on that um, jump-off point. And he would have needed a four, five, or six to yeah, come, on. come on. So it may not have worked. Yeah, it may not. So, uh, so that might have been, might have been, or he just wanted to get rid of that damn, damn thirty-six on Overwatch and run his CS nine up the road. So he might have wanted to do that. But at the moment, it's uh, nicely holding that road junction. So over to John to use his dice. Some interesting shenanigans with this uh, British section in the house. John has uh, used the special rule that the British have with the Bren gun by focusing the junior leader to fire the Bren, uh, which meant he could pick out my LMG team. So he's killed one and put one shock on them. Uh, that was uh, that was an interesting little one. So he's uh, targeted them uh, with his other dice. He's uh, managed to. Put them together and fire at my mortar team, killing one and putting one shock on, which means that they are pinned. Uh, so they fire at half effect, so they would only fire with one dice this next turn. So, yeah, sneaky little things there with John. Um, hmm. Let's have a look what uh, I can do in reply. Let's get me blue dice. Uh, another one five for the chain of command. Two ones, a three, and a two. So that's not bad. That should give us something to work with. Interesting. The uh, the dice that I rolled gave me some difficult decisions. If I'd gone with what I wanted to do, which was use a four to bring on a senior leader, take one one shock off, unpin him, and fire him. Uh, meant that I wouldn't have been able to put these on over on covering fire and uh, fire the LMG whilst these were hacking across the road to go out onto that right flank. Um, yes, just couldn't do that. I, I didn't have the ability to do it. Not enough. No fours uh, and lots of ones and the two. So um, yes, that was about as much as I could do. I've got. Did I do anything in the in the building? Put, killed one. Uh, no. Nope. One pin. One on pin. The LMG. Just one shock on the LMG. Yeah, one shot. Yeah, had five hits, but only one uh, one shock on the LMG. So yeah, yeah a, a troublesome, uh, troublesome little uh, phase that one was. Right on to John's phase. What you gonna roll up, John? Let's start pushing forward. Aha! Two sixes, so you get a second phase. A five okay. of uh, for the chain of command dice, yep. and a one. 
two. And a two. Uh, that's not going to push up much, is it? No. But you've got a second phase, so that could be of use. Yeah. Well. We have come down to the end of a turn. Uh, John fired on the unit down here, which took another pin, which became broken. So then he used his chain of command dice to end the turn, which meant that they routed off. Uh, but I did have to roll on the, the uh, force morale for the... Uh, for breaking. For breaking, and that has... Taking me down to uh, morale 8, dropped down 1. So now John is going to use, because uh, he got a double phase with his uh, with two sixes, so he's going to have a, a roll to see what he can do now. What you got there, John? I've got uh, two twos, a 1, a 4, and a 6. Right, so I'm going to get the next phase, but there's uh, 4 for a senior leader and a couple of 2s and a 1. So. Uh, a little bit of uh, variation John's got there, so we can do a bit there, I think. Yeah, so at the end of that uh, double phase, John has brought on the Crosley armoured car. Uh, it did take a shot at the anti-tank gun, but missed. The troops in the house have uh, fired ahead. Did five hits, but fortunately uh, no effect other than putting... Oh no, he did, get, he did kill one from the rifle section and put one shot on. Uh, roll to see if any of the senior leader or the junior leader was hit, and it wasn't, so that was okay. Uh, and we've run up towards the hedge with the unit and the uh, the officer. So yeah, into my turn, and uh, I need some. I need a load of threes. In response to John's uh, little men over there, I have decided to deploy this unit of uh, Schutzens from the jump off point and take a shot at them. Managed to kill one on the rifle section and put two shock on the uh, bring gun team. And then used my four to bring on my senior leader to activate the anti-tank gun and fire at the Crosley down the road. And needed a five to hit and I rolled a four. Well, no, in fact, I rolled a three. You rolled a three. You, but got, up, you got up to four. Could, you could add one to the, uh, with the junior leader and that took me up to four but I needed a five. So that was a bit of a shame, really. And that was all I could activate. So now it goes over to John for his phase. Yeah, so we've got uh, a six, a chain of command, dice uh, pip, a four, a three, and a two. Mm. Let's see what John can do with that. Well, that was a good round for John. He, uh, he initially fired with his section there, and uh, did a little bit of a uh, little bit on there. Killed one man and put one shock on, and then he brought on the second squad uh, section and fired and killed one man. So I rolled for my junior leader, rolled a one, so he was uh, hit, and then I rolled a one again which he died, and I've lost two points off the force morale, morale um, chart. However, it didn't stop there. John used his uh, direct the brain gun fire skill and fired at the LMG team, killed the man. I then had to roll for the uh, junior leader and the senior leader. Junior leader, no effect. Senior leader wounded. Uh, so we're now dropped on the force morale chart to five. Uh, that was a that was a harsh turn for me. A good one for John. Just realised I could have used the chain of command dice to interrupt and fired at that new unit coming on I think. Because they weren't pinned so they could have done that. Ah, hey ho, never mind. You'll we'll have to remember those sort of things in the future. I'm not sure that's going to give me a great deal. Hmm. Okay then, we'll see what we can do. Well, that was interesting. We did manage to get the anti-tank gun to fire. And that took a shot at the Crossley. And put two shock on it. So uh, I got two net hits and John rolled a five. So uh, its whole machine guns would have been duffed, but it hasn't got one. 
but it did put two points of shock on it, so that, that was not so bad. I used the four to move two men from the uh, rifle team into the LMG team and remove a point of shock from the LMG team, and we did do seven hits on the guys in the house, but fortunately for John, he did save most of them, and we just had one man killed, yep, one man killed and no well. shock. So uh, that was uh, that was good for John. So now John's going to roll some more dice for his face. A six, three fours, and a five. Oh, interesting. Not very good, actually. Not very good. However, it does uh, does cause a little bit of problem over here. Uh, I would think. Uh, I couldn't really do much for them. They're just still hanging out. But we'll see what we can do. Uh, right, I've used my chain of command dice to interrupt John, and I've run them down here. I'm hoping to save them a bit. However, it wasn't enough to get them out of uh, the full sight. So who's firing, John? This unit, as many of this unit as I can fire. All right. Um, let me just get me... So the ones at the back? Yeah, so I think... Probably them two can't fire. You can't fire through your own troops. No, nope, you can't. So uh, I'm going to have LMG team, one, two, three, four men firing. Okie dokie. Uh, one, two pieces of terrain that still counts as light. Yep. So we'll see what John can do with them. I think I've got away quite lightly with that. John only managed to uh, hit one with the five, uh, and I rolled a one, so no casualties. Uh, I was uh, rather lucky. So uh, with that, John has decided not to um, uh, go for any more. Uh, he's got a lit senior leader off board and a section off board still. So um, I have committed everything now. Um, not to great effect. So I'm going to have a quick roll for my dice. And we've got uh, you know, a couple of ones. Oh, some good. Oh, that could be good. Lots of threes to make up. Right. So let's see what we can do. Another opportunity wasted with the anti-tank gun. Took a shot down the road. Got a hit, but didn't do enough damage. Uh, I've got five dice rolling against Johns. Two. I rolled a six out of the uh, the five dice. Just one six. And John rolled a five for his, so it was a net. Uh, yeah, it was equals, wasn't it? And then a roll on the little table, which meant that uh, John rolled a one, and he didn't get any effect. If he had gone the other way, a six, he would have been in loads of trouble. But he didn't. He was lucky this turn around. So all else, uh, all else I could do, uh, I've moved the squad, bit of bravery, into the church, uh, and they've taken up a firing position. And this unit here fired and peppered the people in the building, killing one, putting a point of shock on the LMGs, uh, and wounding the junior leader. And John's force morale has dropped to seven. Uh, however, mine is still on five, so there's two in it. So, right, on to the next uh, roll for John's phase. Oh, that's a nice lot of fives, John. Yeah. But two threes. Oh, that's, uh, that's going to be significant. John's committed his last section, uh, put it onto the uh, deployment zone, and he rolled a four, so that meant the fifth columnist was uh, identified and dealt with. So he's then moved up to take a shot at the infantry in the church and managed to kill one on the LNG team. Uh, no shock anywhere else, but one on the LNG. And I managed to roll well enough not to cause a wound on my junior leader. So let's get some dice together. All oh, that cover fire has gone this time around, hasn't it? Yep. And we need one more dice. And let's see what we can do. Oh, I get a double phase. No. One to the chain of command dice. Oh. And a section can fire. And a one. Oh, so a team can fire. So, let's see what we well, can do. Well, that was very quick. That was a shot at the Crosley with the anti-tank gun. Uh, and I failed to hit it. So we're now back on to our next phase. Uh, no double phase on that one. Three ones, a four and a six. Whoopie doo. Bit of a swing with that one. Just a little bit towards me. So we hit the armoured car again and we got three hits and John rolled one on his defence dice. So that was a net two. Uh, so that has uh, destroyed Gun. the... Gunner. Killed the gunner. So that can't... That's going to take how many turns? Two phases to change. Oh, two phases to change. 
So and also got uh, two pin, two shock markers, wasn't it? So that's on three shock. Uh, and over here, I uh, fired everything into the building and killed another rifleman. But the junior leader took another wound. So John's now down to six on his uh, force morale chart. And the wound he got was he can't activate. Oh, and the wound that he got, he can't activate the unit and, uh, until the end of the turn, until a new turn. So that was quite a good uh, good roll for me. So, John, what's up for you? Panic. Two sixes. Double phase. Double phase, that's good. And a, okay. and a few ones, a couple of ones and a yeah, two. Yeah, a couple of ones. Well, that should be interesting to see what you uh, decide to do. Yeah. Canny use of uh, John's senior leader. He's activated the unit in the field to get them to run at the double. But they didn't. They, four inches. they only ran four inches. <laughs> uh, on three dice, that is not very far at all. But he did activate the unit in the house to take a shot at my Germans behind the hedge. Uh, and he did manage to get two hits. But uh, I rolled pretty low and avoided any damage to them. But John now has a second phase. So, what's it going to be, John? What are you rolling? I had to think there for a minute I was doing something and yep. I just remembered what I was going to do. Oh, senior leader activation and two sections. That could be good for you. Yeah, it could be interesting. Could be interesting. <sighs> yeah, a bit of a stumble forward for John there. The, uh, the troops uh, did nothing to the uh, people in the house. The officer has gone into the back, or well, gone behind. Uh, and did some shots on here and put two hits on both but fortunately um, no kills and one shock so uh, that was as, uh, was better than I thought it was going to be the HM, the medium machine gun, the Vickers took a shot down at the anti-tank gun and uh, fortunately for me uh, I didn't manage to roll any fives or sixes uh, John got three hits on it so I was really lucky so let's have a look for what we can do this turn around myself. We need to get John's killed. Uh, so a three, a two, a one, a five, and a six. Mm, not sure that's going to be good enough to do it, but let's see what we can do. Well, some success on the Crosley. We've got the uh, crew to abandon it, but it doesn't affect the force morale chart. Uh, John was very canny in that last one. He used his chain of command dice to interrupt. And he nearly, it nearly worked. He, uh, he did another casualty on my rifle section. And um, I was just fortunate enough that I had enough men to avoid becoming pinned. Uh, so uh, it nearly worked, that interrupt. That was a good use of it. However, I was able to put some shots on to John once I'd uh, got to my chance to fire. I took a pin, uh, a pin marker off the LMG so it could fire at full effect. Uh, and we've now pinned the five remaining British in the house. So uh, they're pinned in there, and uh, now it's John's roll to see what he's going to do. So we've got a six, a four, two threes and a one? Yep. Yep, oh, that could be good. Mm. Well, we were a little bit short of time there, so we called it at that stage. Uh, John's little ploy at the end. If it had worked, he would have taken out the unit. I would have had to roll for them. I probably would have taken a casualty. If I'd taken a casualty on one of the uh, senior leaders, that would have been off of the force morale. So he could have possibly knocked me down from, I think I must have been on about eight, down to uh, down to five. So uh, I don't think I was going to go any lower than that. And John had uh, dropped down quite a bit. And... He wasn't actually going to be able to uh, clear two complete sections or even get a unit off the board. So the Germans had uh, done what they needed to do. Uh, I think it is a very hard uh, scenario for... Oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Um, yeah, I think it's a very hard scenario for the person who is the attacker in this one to try and clear and also get units off the uh, the board but it was a very enjoyable game uh, still learning lots and I think in this game uh, made better use of 
covering fire and also uh, overwatch uh, I think it was a, a really good move to take the uh, pack 36 and put that on the uh, on that road staring down the uh, the Crosley but uh, John uh, could have could have had a, a bit better luck with some of his shots uh, trying to take out the gun so yeah uh, an, another enjoyable game of chain of command uh, and I think we'll be looking to try and get some more of these in and then start up a campaign we just got to try and work out what campaign we're going to use we've uh, we've got the pint sized campaign books now uh, well uh, P PDFs so uh, we can have a quick revision of those and see what we're going to do Hoping to get a game of bolt action in this uh, this week with my friend Colin. Haven't played him for a little while, so looking at the uh, armies that we've got available, I think we're going to be running a early uh, 1940s battle with my Blitzkrieg Germans against his French. Uh, we're going to have to work out a scenario with that, but hopefully that'll be coming up next on the channel. So. Other key things, what have we got coming along? Uh, yep, don't forget we've got the 1500 subscriber giveaway. Check the video before this one to see how you can enter with a chance to win a set of the Eccentric Man dice. So, uh, yep, the Kofi campaign is still going on and I'll uh, put a link to it in the description. Any uh, any people who can uh, lock me the price of a coffee to help me purchase the new iPad, that would be very much appreciated. Thank you to all those who have already uh, chipped in. That is really kind and it's very nice of you. So, uh, until the next battle report, or things that we forget to say, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Comments in the comments below. Uh, Subscribe if you haven't already, and then don't forget to go and uh, have a look at the giveaway video, and uh, let your friends know about it. Anyway, until the next one, take care, and see you soon.